Hello everyone and welcome back to Homeworld and welcome back to the moon as well. So I'm back on the moon looking for some meteoric ore that I need for a tier 2 rocket. So I think I already have 7 or 8 pieces of ore so I need at least, you know, 10. If I can find some more that would be great but let's find at least 10 meteoric ore and then I'm pretty sure I will be able to make tier 2 rocket. And look at this, one piece of a meteor actually gave me two meteoric ore. So maybe if I find like five of them, that will be enough. Maybe. So I already made some progress actually with my whole refined storage setup and with those other things. It's not finished yet. But once I collect all the meteoric ore, I'm gonna go back and show you my progress and also talk about some of the problems that I encountered. Because there's already some problems in the way. And I did say that it was a very scary undertaking, because there's, uh, there's a lot of things that need to be changed. But in any case, this is something that is better discussed while I'm actually standing in front of all of these machines and cables. So... So far, I haven't seen any more meteors. Where are they? Actually, I wonder if those villagers selling any meteoric ore. Let's see. Because it might be easier for me to get some sapphires. Probably not, but I just wanna know. Okay, they're selling compressed copper. <laughs> I don't need that. Jungle saplings for lunar sapphires. That's not bad. But yeah, there is no there is no meteoric ore for sale, unfortunately. So I must keep going. Keep searching. I'm not even sure how it spawns. Like it might be Well, I, I did see it fall from the sky sometimes. But I just don't know how often it happens. And if it actually needs to fall from the sky, like in a in a chunk that is loaded, or if I can just stumble upon it in here, I'm I don't know. But I must keep searching. I think just to be safe, just in case that I actually need to to have like a loaded chunk, and I need for this meteor to fall, I'm gonna go towards these areas where I've been for a long time, like towards the dungeon maybe, for example, because I spent quite a lot of time in the dungeon and chances are while I was killing this boss some meteoric ore did fall from the sky and, and actually I think I even heard one and I probably picked it all up but there might be more all around this area okay here we are so now I'm just gonna fly around this area. So there was a couple of meteors like over here that I definitely picked up. Let's see what we've got in here though. Now, this actually looks a bit different. It's a fallen meteor, okay. Maybe, okay, it still gave me two meteoric ore. If I can just find a few more, yes! So maybe my theory was correct. Look at all of these meteors. There we go, another two, maybe? Yes! Okay, let me go a little bit farther away. There's actually some kind of a village here. Well, <laughs> some kind of a... It's the same exact village as every other village. But, look at this thing near this village. That is a very special thing. More meteoric ore. There we go, seven? Nope. Should be eight. Oh no. It gave me only one. Only one meteoric ore. Dang it. Okay, sure. Uh, let's take a look around. Another village. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Actually, right next to this very same village and this same dungeon. Two more meteoric ore. Look at this. Nine. And will that be eleven? Yeah, well... Wait a second, okay, okay, there we go, yes! 11 meteoric ore! I think that's enough. I actually think that's enough for a tier 2 rocket. So, 
I need to turn it into ingots now. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like I can crush it. It would have been nice if I can crush it and multiply it by two and then smelt it into ingots, but no. That is not the case. But I think I should have like 18 at least. I need 18 for a rocket. I just don't remember how much I have in my inventory. It's either 7 or 8, probably 7. So I should have exactly what I need right now. And if I don't, then I can always come back. So now I think I'm just gonna put it all into, well, into the furnace and then into compressor to compress it. And while this is happening, I'm gonna show you around my base and show you all the changes I made. So yeah, actually, <laughs> why am I going towards kindergarten? Nothing to see there. Okay, I will see, well, actually, whatever, it's right here. <laughs> It wouldn't be such a long journey back. So there we go. And straight away, first of all, I want to show you some new walls that I built. So here I have a brand new room with a brand new wall and also floor. So under this floor there is basil, a level of basil that is ceiling for galactic craft room. And here I will have a lot of crushers and a lot of furnaces doing a lot of cool things. For example, well, the plan is to have one ender chest from which they will be getting those resources into this whole system and then the finished product will go into some other chest. The problem is, I tried to use those sort of pipes from extra utilities and they're kind of good, except well, they're not really as good as I want for them to be. They're still not as good as Ender Io, for example. But the biggest problem is that for some reason I can't connect those to the Ender storage. And this is absolutely horrible, okay? So, I'm not gonna be using them. I think I'm still gonna use Xnet, just like I've been using it, but with one exception. My setup that was over there, like in this whole refined storage and builder area. Basically an area that actually had all of my... all of my important blocks and machines. Well, this area was a bit messy just because there was a lot of things connected to this network. I think here I'm gonna have one Xnet controller and, well, all of these things will be connected. And obviously there's gonna be more, more pulverizers and more furnaces in the future. But it's still essentially the same block, the same thing. So it's gonna be a much smaller network and it's gonna be a lot easier to adjust it and make changes if necessary. I just really like those cables because they can, they can send power and they can send fluids and they can send items all at the same time. I can accomplish the same with Ender IO if I had it in installed because you can actually have three different kinds of cables sort of on one block. But Ender IO isn't here and I wanted to use something else but unfortunately extra utilities isn't quite up to the task. So let me get some connectors if I have any there we go and also I will need another controller for the network let's see yep that's it oh don't tell me I need quartz I think I will have to <laughs> if I ever need any quartz for anything I, I think I will have to set up the same kind of exchange as I set up for the blaze rods just because I can't go to the nether to collect them, okay? I can't. It crashes. Once again, I really hope that maybe in the future I will find a planet and it will have a lot of quartz, which I can mine. But unfortunately, nether specifically is not an option. Okay, so let's see. Let's place controller in here. And then, I guess, one connector over here and a bunch over there. Everything seems to be connected quite nicely. It even has a 
custom icon in here. Not all mods are compatible with it like this. So I think I also need a flux point, which I have. And this flux point will be the thing that will give energy to all of these blocks. So connecting it over here and let's call it ender chest slash power. Okay, so now, oh yeah, I think I actually need to give some energy to this controller before it can work. So let's do that because those cables wouldn't even be able to send this energy from the flux point if controller doesn't have any energy to begin with. Okay, but now it should be working properly. Let's set this up to send energy. Let's see, extract and send it over here and well, to every other block in the future. So what do we have here? Okay, so this is item input, this is item output, but I think I think other sides might work for energy as well, but just for energy though. Hmm, how am I gonna do that then? Do I actually need to connect them to different sides for different operations? Because that, uh, that will require a lot of connectors. And this setup is also a bit different from what I had before, because before that, I will have my crushers and pulverizers connected directly to furnaces. But sometimes I need some things to be just pulverized and sometimes I don't want for them to be smelted. So I place the chest in here, which is kind of a buffer chest for items from Andrew chest to come out of and, and to just be here until there's enough pulverizers to pulverize them. And then there's another buffer chest before they go to smelting. So if I wanna, I can still grab them from this chest or I can set up a rule so some specific items aren't being taken to the furnaces. And then there's another buffer chest before the next ender chest appears in here. Hmm, but yeah, it is, it is, a, it is a problem that those have different sides. It's also a good thing, but hmm. Well, how much does it even take? To build one of these connectors. Not much. Some blue dye. And I think I can use lapis. Yep. Lapis lazuli. And a chest. A piece of gold. Yeah. Whatever. I can have as many of these connectors as I want. And actually. What I want to do here is something like. This. And then something like. Uh, where is. Yeah. Network cables. There we go. So, once again, it's the same block, so let's call it buffer chest one slash slash pulverizers. And let's try to set up an item rule in here. Wait, what is that? A chest? What is this then? For some reason it sees two ch Oh yeah, because that's a connector as well. Actually... It doesn't have to be. I can do that. And now, an item rule. Items from here will be extracted and then and then transferred over here at the pulverizer. And actually, I'm just gonna go and grab some materials just for this test. For example, a stack of iron ore. Sure. And by the way, let's actually not waste any time. Let me quickly get this out of here. Oh my gosh, it actually ran out of energy. But yes, I wanna I wanna put it into the compressors as soon as I can, which is well, right now. Do I even have any coal in here? Okay, you have some coal. There you go. And actually this setup isn't even gonna be working just yet because I need to make another room in here and I want to make another room but I also I, I really need it for this whole setup for my grand plan to work and the plan is to have a room with just 
ender chest. Just a lot of ender chest. And basically, I'm gonna have one chest, probably just white, white, white configuration, which is gonna be the default chest. And then from this default chest, I will transfer items into a lot of other chests, which will then transfer those items into a lot of different other rooms, like this one, for example. So let's keep going now. And here we will have something like that. And actually, before this rule even, let me just delete it. Oh no, there is... Oh my gosh, another chest again. Wait. Oh yeah, now this thing is connected twice. But it has to be in order to get out the items from the correct side. But in any case, yes, before that even, I need to get items out of the ender chest and into this chest. Just like this. And then I will get items out of that and into this side of the pulverizer. So let's see if it will work now. Here I have some more. Items are going into this chest. And now they should be sent into this pulverizer. But they're not. Let's see. Hmm. Well, actually, I don't know why this icon isn't displayed, but yeah, I guess this is actually the one I need to send items into. I thought I connected this side first, so I thought maybe the other side's icon wouldn't be displayed. But no, that's not the case. And now it's crushing this iron so I can set up another rule for all other pulverizers to get their items out of the western thing and into this chest. Didn't work. Okay, let's see again. Is that even the right chest? Yes, yes it is. Where is the zombie? So annoying. Right behind this wall? No way. Okay. Where are you? Oh my god, what the heck are you doing here? It's like one block. One block of empty space. Actually, it doesn't even deserve a torch. I'm just gonna cover it in cobblestone. Okay, okay, that's much better. Well, for some reason, it doesn't work. But I'm actually thinking of trying something different. So maybe if I just connect it using this, like a network cable, and then I disable that and set this up, I think I can set it up to be both input and output, just like this. So now I can... Uh, I will need a lot of custom rules for that, though. I think that might have been an energy channel to begin with. Oh well. Okay, so let me do... Actually, maybe it will understand that it doesn't have to extract what it just put in. So, all I need now is to give this block some energy and I think it will work properly. Okay, let's see. Let's see. It has some raw iron and as soon as it gets into this chest, it immediately transfers it into pulverizer and then into this buffer chest. Good, good. So this part of the setup is working as intended. Now, my other cables. Now, we get to the redstone furnaces. So the same thing, just gotta disable all of that. And this acts as both input and output for items. And now, this is working as well. And even meteoric iron ingot is already in this chest. So all I need now is to place another chest, another ender chest in here. And also, well, build a whole other room <laughs> full of ender chests. Which is gonna be fun and also time consuming and I'm probably gonna do most of it in between episodes. But now... Now I have enough meteoric ore in order to start working 
on tier 2 rocket and I might even start doing this in the next episode we'll see we'll see let's just quickly compress this last piece of meteoric ore there we go wait a second oh yeah dang it it's not the last piece unfortunately I still have some in my refined storage so in this room everything is pretty much the same still with the exception of obviously I moved some blocks away but soon all of these blocks refined storage builder all of that they will have different rooms for themselves okay well I need to smelt it first so yeah in the next episode I just might start working on tier 2 rocket and I hope you enjoyed this episode and if you did make sure to subscribe for more and I will see you in the next video.